Hola, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. Join us on a trip to the wonderful Avila. Today we are going to tell you what to do in the city. Founded according to some theories by the Romans, Avila was over the centuries Visigothic, Muslim, Jewish and Christian. As a result, it has an extensive historical heritage, which led UNESCO to include it on the World Heritage List in 19. 1985. To those unfamiliar, Avila is in the middle of the Iberian Peninsula, 110 kilometers to the west of Madrid. You could reach Avila by car. There are two possible routes, one slightly faster via a tall motorway and the other slightly slower via a free road. You could reach Avila by bus. There is a direct bus that takes approximately one hour and a half. The buses leave from the Estación Sur de Autobuses in Madrid and arrive at the bus station in Avila. The bus station in Avila is east of the center, not far from the train station. It takes about 25 minutes to walk from the station to the cathedral and the city wall in the heart of Avila. Or you could reach Avila by train. There is no high-speed train connection between Madrid and Avila, so if you want to travel by train to the city, you will have to travel by conventional train. The fastest journey takes an hour and a half. Trains depart from Principe Pio station in Madrid, which is very easy to get to as it is integrated into the capital's metro network. And Avila train station is east of the city center. It it's a 20 minute walk from the station to the cathedral and the city wall in the heart of Avila. Let's have a look on the map at all the places we're going to talk about on this program and stay till the end of the video to find out how much time you should dedicate to Avila. Probably the most outstanding and famous place in Avila is its extraordinary city wall, La Muralla. The wall of Avila is a gigantic defensive barrier with a total length of more than two and a half kilometers. The wall completely surrounds the historic city center and is the best preserved wall in Spain and one of the most splendid in Europe. The wall has a total of 87 towers, also known as cubes. To cross the wall, there are nine gates, some of which are truly spectacular, such as the Puerta del Alcázar, which looks more like the entrance to an impregnable castle, with its great defensive towers protecting the city. The wall was built on top of what was probably an older defensive structure. The wall as we see it today is a work erected in the Middle Ages, during the 12th century as well as being able to contemplate the wall from outside or inside the old center of Avila, you can also walk along the top of the wall, which is great fun, in particular if you are traveling with children. The entrance to the wall is through the Puerta del Peso de la Harina. It is just to the right of the back of the cathedral. When you reach the top of the wall, you will come out very close to the cathedral and you will be able to get a close-up view of the Cimorro, which is the name given to the part of the apse that was integrated into the wall. What a great idea! Cathedral and wall at the same time. You are going to start walking along the wall at this point. You will see that the path is very good and quite safe, which is good news because the height above the street is considerable at some points along the route. Make sure you always keep your eyes on the inside and outside of the wall because there are interesting places on both sides. The state of conservation of the wall is excellent and a large stretch of it is accessible even for people in wheelchairs. The final section of the wall is the farthest away from the cathedral where the visit to the wall ends. If it fits into your schedule, we recommend that you visit the wall in the afternoon. And that's because the end point of the walk is very close to the path going up the Cuatro Postes, an unmissable spot in Avila that we recommend visiting at sunset. We will talk about it later on the video. Of course, you don't have to pay to see the wall from the outside, but you do have to buy a ticket to visit the upper part of the wall. In the description of the video, we are going to leave a link to the website of the wall where you can and check the opening times and updated prices. If you want to know our opinion, the walk along the wall is beautiful and very, very worthwhile. The Visit Avila Tourist Card Pass includes the climb up the wall. Avila's second must-see 
is its majestic Cathedral of Christ the Savior in the heart of the old center. When viewed from the outside, it is a cathedral with a format quite different from other Castilian cathedrals because it was built to be a temple and a fortress at the same time. As we just saw visiting the wall, the apse of the cathedral, for example, is integrated into the city wall. The main part of the cathedral will have been built in the 12th century, having been completed between the 13th and the 16th centuries. Due to lack of funds, only one tower was built. Begun in Romanesque style, it was the first Gothic cathedral in Spain with clear French influences. The entrance to the temple is through the western door, which is not the original door of the cathedral and is formed by a just a position of parts belonging to different historical periods. When you enter the cathedral, you will see that its interior, in the shape of a Latin cross, is made up of three naves. The central nave is much higher than the side naves, and the walls of the central nave above the side naves are filled with stained glass windows that allow light to enter the church. The visit to the cathedral ends in the cloister, built in Gothic style and finished in Renaissance style. It has large windows overlooking the central courtyard and three chapels. The chapels now house the Cathedral Museum, which contains valuable religious and artistic objects. In addition to visiting the cathedral, you can buy a separate ticket to climb the Cathedral Tower, which offers magnificent views of Avila. In the description of the video, we will put a link to the website of the cathedral where you can see the visiting hours and ticket prices. Is it worth going in to see the cathedral? The cathedral is magnificent and quite different from other Spanish cathedrals. If you like architecture and history, you will love the visit. If you were visiting other cities in Spain and had already used up your quota of cathedrals, bearing in mind that you have to pay to enter almost all of them, you can skip it, but with great sorrow to our heart. We know that traveling budgets are limited and also that after five or six cathedrals, the brain can no longer process so much beauty and information. An outstanding feature of the historic center of Avila is the presence of numerous palaces built mainly between the 15th and 16th centuries, a period of splendor in the city. Most of the palaces are located inside the city walls, where they form a sort of second line of defense for the city. Magnificent constructions such as the Torreón de los Guzmanes also contributed to this defensive task. All of them have a sober appearance on the outside and a greater decorative richness on the inside. Today, some of the palaces have been converted into hotels. We stayed some time ago in the Palacio de los Velada, which has a very, very nice inner courtyard. A palace that can be visited for free without having to pay an entrance fee is the 16th century Palacio de los Polentinos. Today it houses the military historical archive and a military museum, but if you want to go inside just to walk around the courtyard, you can do so. The Basilica of San Vicente is one of the most important churches in Avila. It is outside the city walls and it was built between the 15th and 16th centuries with several additions in later centuries. It was big begun in Romanesque style and finished in Gotico Isabellino, also known as Hispano-Flemish Gothic or Catholic Monarch style, a transitional style between late Gothic and early Renaissance. The interior is made up of three naves and a transept with a Latin cross floor plan. One of the jewels inside the basilica is the Cenotaph of the Martyrs, dedicated to Saints Vincent, Sabina and Cristeta. It is a great funerary monument and a very important work of Romanesque sculpture. 
The reliefs and sculptures tell stories related to the lives of the saints. The visit to the basilica is paid. The monastery of Santo Tomas is one of the great jewels of Avila, but the city is outside the city walls, a 20-minute walk from the center. It is one of the most overlooked sites by those who visit the city, which is a real shame. It is one of the monuments in Avila that are outside the city walls and are part of the UNESCO World Heritage Collection. The monastery was built between 1482 and 1493 by order of the Catholic monarchs. The monastery has had several uses. It, it was the seat of the Spanish Inquisition and also a university. Inside you will visit a church with three naves. Just below the space occupied by the transept is the tomb of the Infante Don Juan, the only son of the Catholic monarchs. He died when he was only 19 years old before ascending to the throne. The monastery has three cloisters. Occupying several rooms around the final cloister are two small museums, one of natural sciences and the other of oriental art. You pay to visit the monastery. We know that the monastery is not in the center of the city, but it is not the end of the world either. And we believe that the visit is very worthwhile, especially for those who have set aside enough time for Avila. The devotees of Santa Teresa de Jesus visit Avila in the footsteps of a saint, a great mystical figure of the Catholic Church, known in Avila as simply the saint, La Santa. A very important place in Avila associated with Teresa de Jesus is the Church of the Saint, where Santa Teresa was born. That is, Teresa was not actually born in the church, but in the space on which it was built. The church was built in the 17th century on the site of her birthplace. In front of the church, there is a sculpture of the saint accompanied by a pen and a book. It is a very beautiful sculpture designed so that everyone can sit next to it and have their photo taken. And in the same square to the right of the church facade is the Hall of Relics. And a short distance from the church on the street to its left is the Museum of Santa Teresa. The center of Avila, where the city walls, the cathedral and the palaces mentioned above are located, is a very pleasant place to stroll around, with a large number of pedestrian streets. In the more touristy areas, these streets are lined with shops selling souvenirs and handicrafts. There are remains of Avila's history hidden in every corner of the city. One of the most important spaces in the center is the Plaza del Mercado Chico, as if it were a small Plaza Mayor of Avila. The building that occupies the central space of the square is the Casa Consistorial, the seat of the Town Council of Avila. And to finish our tour of the must-see places in Avila, we go to the Cuatro Postes, the Four Posts, a place that, although it is outside the city walls, no one should miss not even those who visit Avila as a day trip from Madrid. And nobody should miss it because it is the viewpoint with the most spectacular views of the city. If you visit Avila as a day trip from Madrid, you will only get to the Cuatro Postes during the day, but the magic of the place comes when evening falls, the perfect time to climb up to the viewpoint. The sight of Avila bathed in the evening light is very special. And just to experience that moment alone would justify sleeping in Avila for at least one night. It is very easy to get to the Cuatro Postes. There is a well-maintained path that starts at a point halfway between the Exhibition and Conference Center and the Church of San Segundo. It is well lit, so returning after dark is no problem. What we recommend you to do is to visit the wall in the afternoon, and when you have finished your visit, continue on to the Cuatro Postes. The end point of the wall tour is quite close to the path to the Four Posts. On the way back after sunset, take the opportunity to return to the center along the outer part of the wall, which is beautifully illuminated at night. And let's quickly mention several typical foods from Avila which you should be familiar. The first is Judiones del Barco de Avila. There are large white beans which are usually prepared accompanied by various sausages. 
The second food is the veal from Avila. It is prepared in many ways. The most famous of these is the chuleton de Avila. And finally, a delicious and traditional sweet, the yemas de Santa Teresa, also known as yemas de Avila. The name reflects the devotion felt in Avila for the saint. You will find the yemas in bakeries, specialty shops, and souvenir shops everywhere. The yemas are made with eggs, cinnamon, sugar, and lemon. They are round and slightly orange in color, and they are delicious. Several times along the video we have mentioned the entrance fees to the monuments. The tourist office of Avila sells a pass called Tarjeta Turistica Visita Avila, which we find quite interesting. The pass allows you to enter, among others, the following monuments of Avila mentioned in the video. The wall, the cathedral, the Monasterio de Santa Tomás, the Basilica de San Vicente and the Museum of Santa Teresa in addition to six other monuments that we have not talked about. In the description of the video, we're going to place a link where you can consult the price and conditions of the pass. We used it and thought it was a great investment. To find out if it's worth buying the pass for you, you will have to analyze how many attractions you intend to visit and calculate their price separately to see what works best for you. The pass is valid for 48 hours. And with the pass, we have reached the end of the video. We are now going to try to answer a very important question about Avila. How much time to dedicate to the city? Many people think of Avila as a day trip from Madrid. And until not so long ago, that seemed like a good idea to us. But we have changed our minds. Avila has many interesting places and it takes a long time to visit them. Just to walk along the city wall and up to the Cuatro Postes, for example, will take you a few hours. If you go to Avila during the day, you will have to make a lot of compromises, leaving out places that seem extraordinary to us. That's why we recommend that you try to sleep at least one night in the city. If you do that, you will be rewarded with a chance to stroll around Avila lit up at night. If you are planning a tour of Spain, Avila combines quite well with two other incredible cities in the region, Segovia and Salamanca, and both have videos in the channel. If you have any doubts about your visit to Avila, take advantage of the commentary box and ask. You will see now on the screen our list of Spanish city guides. We hope you find them useful when it comes to planning your next trip to Spain. Até mais, hasta la próxima. See you soon.